Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz, and I'd like to welcome you to this Resurrection Day service, Easter Sunday in the year of our Lord 2022, here at Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church in Aurora, Illinois. The theme for our service and sermon this morning is Death Destroyed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the God who remembers his promises. Hear the word of the Lord. What I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. If for only this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all people. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Join me as we praise God in the words of the great resurrection hymn, Christ is Risen. Christ is risen from the dead. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the sure and confident hope that God is eager to hear us for Christ's sake. Dear God, since the fall, all mankind has been born dead in sin and desperately in need of a Savior. You sent Jesus into our world and anointed him with your Holy Spirit to serve as our prophet, priest, king, and atoning sacrifice. We are genuinely sorry for all our sins and earnestly desire to amend our sinful lives. Forgive us for Jesus' sake. Amen. God looked through time and saw our desperate condition as his lost children. With fatherly divine mercy and compassion, he sent his perfect sinless son to bring life in all its abundance by destroying the power of death through his innocent, bitter sufferings and death in the stead of, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins based on your confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We respond to God's absolution of our sins by singing, Glorious Day. Black. 
The Old Testament lesson for today inspired one of the most popular Easter and burial hymns of all time. It's Job chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. The Easter Gospel is John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look inside the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the resurrection. Our sermon song this morning is, I know that my Redeemer lives.
death destroyed. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 57. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we confess in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Easter Sunday is a time when we get to share a little piece of Christ's everlasting victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. If you watch some avid sports fans going nuts over their team, they'll frequently say things like, We did it! They may clap or urge their players on, even if they're watching hundreds or thousands of miles away on a TV or a computer. Go, go, go! We can do it! We can do it! And then when the victory however large or small is one. It's, we did it, when actually it was the individual sports figures that won the victory. We like to have a share in the victory, especially when we see things broken. There's death and despair and often gloom and sadness that we can see in our headlines each and every day. The war in Europe and the war in Africa and starvation all around the world yield its grim harvest. And we can look at these words, which are so often read at Christian funerals. And as a green, newly minted pastor, I've got to tell you, saying, Death is swallowed up in victory when you have the dead body, the earthly remains of a brother or sister in Christ right before you. It takes a bit of faith to keep reading. Death is swallowed up in victory. Jesus has actually destroyed death. But the dead body, the remains are there. What our eyes see is the body bereft of the spirit, bereft of life. We who are but dust and ash have seen friends or family members or extended family members pass from this life to the next. And not a single one of them passed without Jesus offering his death for theirs. You see, the great victory, the great destruction of death that Jesus won for us by his absolute perfect life of complete obedience from the moment of conception to the moment that he said, it is finished, tetelestai, from the cross. Completed action with abiding results. The job of reconciling 
God's justice, who has the right to punish all of the sins of all people of all time? Jesus reconciled the righteousness of God with the mercy of God and made it possible for all to repent of their sins and trust in Christ as Savior and Lord. To be moved from mortal beings born spiritually dead and enemies of God. You can read that in Ephesians 2 anytime you wish. To being alive in Christ, vivified by the waters of baptism, applying the gospel of Jesus Christ to us through God's mighty word vivified by his gift of faith that grasps on to the forgiveness that Christ won for us on the cross. And death is destroyed. Now you might be like me and you may have destroyed a whole bunch of things in your lifetime. You may even watch people on YouTube who for the fun of it and who get millions more likes than I'll ever get and millions more followers than I'll ever have on YouTube, destroy things in all manner of ways. But Jesus' destruction of death is by trampling over death through his own death. His undeserved death destroyed the power of death. Jesus, who came to bring life in all of its spiritual abundance, none of this name it and claim it magical hokum gospel that gets sold on TV. But Jesus came to destroy the power of death, to destroy the power of the devil, to destroy the works of Satan, that liar and murderer from the beginning. You and I will still get our wages in bodily death, these mortal bodies that we have, wear out. Never ceases to surprise me how when I was younger I could tell immediately if I was overdoing it because my body would give me signals just like that. Now if I spend eight or ten hours working on a project, I don't really feel tired until I stop. And then I start to seize up and creak and hobble. I joke around with my kids that I have two speeds. I have dawdle and hobble, neither of which are very fast anymore, especially after working this old mortal clay into exhaustion. Jesus' promise that I share with everyone that I visit is that he is the resurrection and the life and all who believe in him will live even though they die. If you believe those words of the Apostles' Creed and not just mouth them, then you have eternal life as well. You have an eternally living Lord who is preparing a place for you in heaven, a place of perfect health, perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect communion with all those who've preceded you in the one true Christian faith and all who will follow you in the same. Unlike the things that you and I destroy, smash up a car, it doesn't heal itself. You hurt an animal, unintentionally. There's nothing you can do. That crazy relative of Bambi's leaps in front of your car, your truck. If you survive, your car probably hasn't, and Bambi's relative probably hasn't either. If you are working on one of those fragile items, and you drop something or swing something that isn't fragile into it, there's often a crash and a tinkle 
and the reminder that what you've destroyed can't be put back together again by all the king's horses or all the king's men. But Jesus is infinitely more powerful than all the king's horses and all the king's men on earth. Jesus came to destroy death and to undo the works of the devil. And he did it by trampling over death by his unearned and undeserved, his gracious and gratuitous and vicarious death on the cross for you. He destroyed the power of death so that you might live forever in eternity with him and joyfully and with a great sense of calling and satisfaction in serving him in whatever time you have between now and when he calls you home. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, amen. Now may that peace which surpasses all human understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in him alone, amen. We pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. All who believe in you will live even though they die. We owe you more than we can understand for redeeming us and sharing your resurrection victory with us. Give us hearts to share your eternally good news with our world. Through the power of your gospel, make us your obedient, faithful, and courageous servants. Bless the efforts of ours and all Christian churches to provide relief and aid to the lost all over the world, especially in war-torn Europe and Africa. Give Presidents Biden, Zelensky, Putin, and world leaders wisdom in these perilous times and bless diplomatic relations to end the war. Help our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world remain faithful. According to your gracious good will, Aid those we name in our hearts who need your healing. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing song this morning is Christ the Lord is risen today.